What we will be showing during this video. Using the Halloween number 2 CNC project, we'll create a custom layout. We will also show you how to create basic tooling for that layout. For this demo, we'll be using VCarve Pro 8. It's important to note that the tools that we're using in this demo are also available in VCarve Desktop and Aspire. So this tutorial is great for all three pieces of software. So we're going to create a brand new layout. And this layout is going to be 12 or 18 by 14. And our material is going to be one inch thick. Our data will be set to the center. We're going to use inches use a very high resolution. We're going to click OK. Now we're going to use the Halloween number two project. So we're going to go over to our clip art tab. We're going to do our design and make installed projects. We're going to go find the Halloween number two. And there it is right there. So we're going to start off by double clicking on the marquee sign. And that's going to put the marquee sign right in the middle of our workspace. So we're going to go ahead and hold down the shift key and dynamically size that up to fit roughly the space we have in our material. That's probably good right about there. Now for most of this demo or the rest of this demo, we're gonna do all of our work with the exception of laying out uh, V carving in the 3D view. So we're gonna click to the 3D view and there we have our marquee sign in the 3D view. Now we wanna make sure that out of this one inch uh, piece of material, we're only gonna use three quarters of that for our actual project. So we're going to click on this bottom button right there and we're going to change this to be 0.75 and we're going to press the space bar and VCare Pro will scale the shape height for us. So the highest point of this model now is at three quarters of an inch. We don't want anything to be any higher than that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in our skull. Now the great thing about a lot of these um, plaques and sign shapes from Design and Make is that they've been smartly created. And in this case, you'll see that it's got a very thin back on it. Um, and that's so that merging in models or adding models to it, it makes it really easy or adding textures. And also um, you can get the best bang for your Z height out of your material. So you can have uh, something on there and it, the backing is only going to take up a little bit of your available Z height. So we're going to have to look straight down on that and we're going to drag in the skull. This is another way of bringing in a model from your clip art is to drag it in. And of course, when you drag it in, it doesn't appear in the center of your, your um, workspace. So if you press F9, that will center it. Right again, we're going to dynamically, holding down the shift key, we're going to size this up to be approximately the size we want it to be. We're going to use our cursor keys and nudge it down into place. Now, another great thing about these models is that we put a little thought into what use you might have for them. So in this particular case, you can see if we rotate this up, the teeth of the skull are higher in the middle, so you can wrap it over things. The curls on the marquee banner are high, so you can tuck things into it and hide things in there to make your layout much more interesting. Now in this particular case, you can see the, the marquee sign showing through the eye sockets in the skull. So we need to do a couple things. One, first of all, we need to change the shape height of our skull to give us a little bit more shape height, because right now you can see that it's not quite lined up with the top of our curls and our marquee sign. And also we want to get it so that it's sitting on top of the marquee sign, not merged through. So we're going to go ahead and click on the properties, floating properties dialog here. And we're going to change this to be probably about 0.65. Oops, oh, sorry, too many points in there, 0.65. And we're going to make, uh, we're going to give it a slight base height of 0.05. And that's just going to raise it up off the surface of our marquee sign just a bit. We're going to close that down. We're going to take a look and you'll see that it should be just about the same height as our curls, which is perfect. That looks great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drag in one of our bony hands and we're going to dynamically place that. We want it to be, we're going to rotate it around going to slide it in by the side of the skull, size it down just a little bit, and you'll see that the fingers are merging in with the marquee sign. If we click on the properties, you'll see that it's been set to be a merge component. If we set it to be an add component, the fingers will wrap up over the edge 
of the marquee sign and it looks kind of funny. So we're going to go back to merging that. Whereas before we had added the skull, we're going to merge in the bony hand. And we're going to close that down. Now we're going to assume that this skeleton has a right hand as well. So we're going to go to our drawing tab and we're going to click on mirror selected objects. And we're going to mirror that hand across our uh, job. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make sure that we have flip about job center. And we're going to say create a mirrored copy should be clicked on and we're going to flip horizontally. And now we're going to have our two hands and our skull. Looks great. Let's close that down. Now we're going to go ahead and flip to our 2D view for a moment and we're going to add in some text to be v carved. So we're going to click on our text and we are going to type in some text here, which is going to be you have kept me waiting. Where, I'm sorry, have you been? We're going to make sure that that is bold. We're going to make sure that it's center, our text alignment is centered, and the text height, that's fine. And we're going to click apply, and it's going to pop that right in the middle of our job space. We're going to close that down. We're going to select it, and we're going to wiggle that up to where it belongs. We're going to size it down just a little bit. We want to keep it away from the the edges of these curls. So when we do our V carving, it won't mar the edge of this too much or any. There we go. Now that's perfect. So let's just go ahead and create some tooling for that. So we're going to go ahead and press F12 on our keyboard to bring up our tool pass tab. And then actually, you know what we're going to do is we're going to go press F11 and go back and we're going to tile this left and right. And now we'll press F12. And that way we can see both our 2D and our 3D at the same time. Now, if we did want to send this out to a customer to approve, of course, we can't send it with the, the text in there unless we do our tooling and we preview all the tool paths. Then we can show this to our client so they can approve the V carving. So that's what we're going to do. So when we do our profile cut, we're not going to have tabs in there, mainly because we want to be able to delete the waste material so that we can send off a photo to our customer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our material. So we're going to make sure that we have a one inch thick piece of material, our datum set to the center. We're going to make sure that our model position is at the very top of our board and the gap is below the model. That way that extra quarter inch will help to uh, make our um, sign much more rigid. And this will be, these numbers here will be dependent on your machine. Click OK. Now we're going to go ahead and quickly do our roughing pass. So we're going to use a, um, an end mill. We're going to use our model boundary. So VCAR Pro will sort out um, what the boundary is. We're going to offset that by a quarter inch and we're going to leave behind 0 0.04 um, inches of material behind so that'll give us some material to clean off during our finishing pass. The rest of this material we the rest of these settings will be based on what you like to do with your machine. Calculate. And we're going to preview each tool path as we make it to make sure that it looks right. If it doesn't look right in our preview then the chances are pretty good it's not going to look right in your machine. So I'd recommend you go back and take a look and see where you went wrong. So there we are as our roughing pass. Let's close that down. Let's go ahead and do our finishing pass. We're going to use the uh, 1 8 inch ball nose. We are going to use the model boundary. We're going to offset that by a quarter inch again. We're going to use an offset strategy and we're going to go ahead and calculate that. Let's take a few seconds to generate. Um, and it's figuring out the finishing pass. So we get a nice clean um, finishing cut so that uh, we don't have to do a whole lot of hand work this particular layout. There we have it. So we're going to preview that visible toolpath. 
and it should clean up quite nicely and the tool should get in everywhere is nice and cleanly. That looks great. Let's go ahead and close that down. Now we're going to go ahead and do our v-carving. So we're going to select our text that we're going to v-carve. We're going to make a v-carving toolpath. We're going to use a 60 degree cutter for this. And we're going to make sure that we um, project that onto our 3D model. Although it's a flat surface, VCarve will do all the work to make sure that it sits uh, on the surface of our model. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. Let's preview that. Looks perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and do our profile cut. So we're going to close that down. And in order to do a profile cut, we need to have an outline. So we're going to select our marquee banner. We're going to press 11, F11, excuse me. We're going to go ahead to our modeling tab and we're going to get a vector outline from that. So we're going to click that. And you may, it may not look like it did anything, but if you, if you unselect the marquee sign, there is a vector right there. It's in purple. So if I press F12, we can go ahead and do our profile cut. Now, this is an important tip is that your start depth is the maximum depth that you have had, that you've tooled down, or, or that your thickness of your um, outside cut is, your offset is. So in this case, we know that we've gone down three quarters of an inch to get down to below this marquee sign. So we're going to make this first cut 0.75. And our cut depth is now going to be a quarter inch. So these two added together should equal one inch or your material thickness. If they don't, then you've got a mistake. You need to sort that out. We're going to use our end mill, which is great. We're going to go outside that line. We're not going to add any tabs, but generally you would add tabs because if you don't, then your part, when it's doing the profile cut, could fly out and end up hurting your machine or even worse, hurting you. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. We're going to preview that visible tool path. That looks great. And then if we double click, we're going to get rid of our weight waste material. So now what you can do is you can send this off to your customer for approval. This is only one layout, and you can imagine how quickly you could make several different layouts with the same project and its model. So let's close this down for a sec. And let's press F11 and bring us back up to our drawing tab. We're going to flip over to our Oh, actually, we can do it all in the 3D view. We're going to double click on the skull, double click on the hands. We're going to delete those out of there. Let's go to our clip art tab, and we are going to drag in uh, the masquerade mask, scale it up. Then we're going to bring in our hat. This would be great for maybe a theater project uh, production of maybe the Phantom of the Opera or something like that. So now all we need to do is just get these to work properly. So we're going to click on it again, go to our floating properties dialog. We can size this up to be 0.55 off the top of my head. And we're going to make this 0.75. The way these models were made is they were made pretty smartly. So you can actually put the hat over top of the mask with very little effort. And you could add a bit of V carving to that, or you could size this down and add some V carving across the top, inviting people to a theater production. Pretty fast and easy. And because these have been smartly modeled, it's easy to tuck things under other things and add things on top of other things. So it makes it quite uh, versatile, these projects. Important note, if you plan to create tooling and run it on your CNC, make sure that you use values for the material setup and for the parameters of each toolpath that are safe and appropriate for your CNC machine, the tooling you have available, and whatever material you are planning to use for your project. What you saw in a nutshell, we use the Halloween number two CNC project we use several models from this project to create a custom layout. It's super easy to add V carving to customize your layout. We created basic tooling and use one CNC project to create many different layouts.